Good morning. What a lovely day it is on this morning. It's a joy to be with you, to share the Word of God with you. We, we thank the Lord for His goodness and His mercy uh, that He extends to us each and every single day. Amen. We are in the season of Christmas. Uh, and, you know, you're probably hearing the, the songs already and everybody's shopping and doing different things in, 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 in spite of all that is going on in our world and the chaos that's happening. Uh, but we thank God that 2,000 years ago, a miracle took place. God became a man. Isn't that wonderful? God became a man took on human flesh, all in pursuit of you and I. And that's what we're going to continue talking about this morning. He was, he was in pursuit of mankind. And so he took on human flesh in order to come after us, to come and rescue us from the bondage of sin. Hallelujah. And to set us free, to liberate us. So that man can once again find his true purpose and, and the intent that the Creator had for us in making us. <laughs> that is so wonderful. And you know what? What I want to do this morning, just for a few minutes, I just want us to just thank the Lord. All right? Let's just give, let's just give praise and thank to God just for a few minutes. Because God has been so good. Amen. He has been so good. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we just give you praise, God. We give you honor. We give you glory that you would come in the form of flesh. I tell you, that is, that is just, you know, the more, I, every time I think about it, I think, man, this is so marvelous. When you look at, uh, when you look at television, good morning, Jordan. When you look at television and you, uh, and you see, you see, uh, you see some of the things that happen as far as, you know, if you're looking at a movie with Greeks and Greek goddesses and stuff like that, you see sometimes how they manhandle men and, and do with men. And, and, you know, it's almost like, uh, you know, they control them to some degree and punish them on all of that stuff. But boy, I tell you, God becoming a man, taking on human flesh and allowing his own creation to kill him, to put him to death. So that he might pay the price to rescue you and I. Oh Lord, we just thank you this morning. We just give you all the praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. There is none like you, Lord Jesus, in all the earth. And we praise you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us healthy and strong for covering our families, Lord God. And, and Lord, even if we have lost our jobs, that you are the provider. You're the one that will provide for us if we're sick, Lord God. If we, if we uh, have contracted this coronavirus, Lord, that you, by your Spirit, will bring healing to our bodies, to our minds, dear Father. Lord, I give you thanks, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you lift every spirit of heaviness, every spirit of heaven is dear God. Every spirit of fear and depression and oppression, you lift it off of our lives, Lord God, and you strengthen us. You strengthen us, dear God. We just honor you, Lord. Come on, help me just thank him a moment. Help me just praise him a moment. Help me to just glorify him a moment. He is so good to us. He is so good to us, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you glory, Lord. Lord, I give you glory. I give you glory. I give you glory. I give you glory. I give you glory, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed is his name. Praise be to his name. Wonderful is our God. Oh, he's glorious. He's mighty. He is mighty. Psalm said, the Lord our God is mighty to save. He renews us with his love. 
Oh, we just honor you this morning, Lord. Lord, we just thank you this morning. You are so good to us. You're so glorious, Lord. You're wonderful, dear Father. Jesus, we just love you. We love you this morning. You're so good to us, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Jesus, we glorify your holy and righteous name. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that by your blood we have redemption through your blood, even the forgiveness of our sins according to the richness of your grace, that which you purpose in Christ. Oh, God, when you raised them up from the dead and you set them at your own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world to come. We, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Whatever position, situation, whatever challenges we might be facing, Lord God, Lord, we just look to you, Lord, this morning. We trust you, Lord. We depend on you, God. There's no one greater than you. There's no one that has greater power than you. Oh, Father God, we magnify you. We magnify you in our lives. We, we magnify you in our circumstances. We magnify you, dear Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we have the revelation of the Word of God. The greater is he that's living on the inside of us than the one that's in the world. You're greater than every trial, every circumstance, every tribulation, every battle, every storm, Lord. We just honor your worth, worth, righteous name. We honor your majestic name, Jesus. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you are our life, Lord. You, we just don't live. You, you are our life, Jesus. You are the very breath that we breathe. You're the reason for our existence. It's because of you that we have hope. It's because of you that we have a destiny. We have a reason and a purpose for living. Lord God, you are our answer, not our monies. Lord, not the things that we own. Oh, God, not our properties, Lord. Oh, God, no, Lord, you are our only answer. And we thank you this morning. We give you glory. We give you praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. We could just play one song. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so good. Come on, let's just worship him this morning. Let's just worship him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Oh, we praise thee. We worship thee. We glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Do you love him this morning? Do you love him this morning? Do you love him this morning? Oh, there is none like him in all the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed is your name, Lord. Blessed is your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless him. We bless him. We honor him. We bless him. We glorify him. We glorify him. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being so good, Lord. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for caring for us this morning. Oh, we just worship you. We just honor you. And we just love you, Jesus. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, as we bless him, he lifts us. As we glorify him, he, he pours his blessing and his, and his favor, his love, his mercy, 
upon us. Hallelujah. Thank be unto God. The Bible says who always gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a glorious, what a wonderful God we serve. Oh, we worship him. We glorify him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thanks be unto God. Oh, thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, he's so good, right? He's so glorious. He's so magnificent. I don't know what I would do without him. I don't know what I would do without Jesus. What I would do without Jesus in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is real. A so old song said, he's so real. So real. Real in my soul today. Because he has washed all my sins away. You remember that song? Oh, God. Amen. Amen. Well, we greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Rodolfo Peterkin, the pastor and founder uh, of Rodolfo Peterkin Ministries and the Seed Center Church. We are located at 420 South Babcock in the great city of Melbourne, Florida. Amen. And uh, for those of you who are in the area, we love to invite you to come out and visit with us. Uh, we've been doing a lot right now online due to the uh, coronavirus, but uh, things are going to change in, in the near future. And so we encourage you to come out and visit with us, come out and worship God with us, amen, and hear and learn the word of the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. I also want to encourage you, I see some of you have already started that, but I want to encourage you on those likes and love buttons, amen, because you know, uh, I can't see you, you can see me, but I can't see you, right? And so I, I don't, you know, I don't know your reaction, so uh, those loves and like buttons just tell me, hey, you know, the Word of God is resonating with me. I appreciate uh, what's doing. Or it might just say glory, you know, praise God. You know what I'm saying? And so I just want to encourage you to hit those likes buttons for me. Wherever you listen to us, whatever part <clears throat> of the world you're hearing us from, uh, we want to encourage you to take the, the moment or take the time to <clears throat> share God's Word with us. Let us know how the message is blessing you, all right? I also want to encourage uh, many of you um, uh, right there in the in the uh, on your screen uh, in the comment section. Please don't forget to write your comments down. If you got any comments, any questions, uh, we would love for you uh, to do that this morning. Okay. Um, uh, while I'm teaching, <clears throat> I want to encourage you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, would you please put it on the screen? All right. Put it on the screen, uh, and, and I will make sure that we uh, address any questions or any comments that you might have, okay? So please put that on the screen, and uh, we will ensure that we, uh, that we address your questions or your comments. We are, are dealing with this wonderful topic on the, the, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I, I hope you've been enjoying it. We've been talking about the body of Christ and what the body of Christ really is. Okay, what does the Bible say the body of Christ is? And uh, I'm, I'm going to continue that. I know many of you may have some questions or some comments about that. I want to encourage you in the name of the Lord uh, to just put it on your screen. Let's go ahead and entertain uh, whatever it is that you, uh, that you have, any questions that you may have. But I want you to go to the book of Ephesians this morning. Uh, the book of Ephesians, and I'm going, to, I'm going to read starting from chapter 2, chapter 2, and what I'm going to do tonight, we may go to some other places, we may, we may not, but but there is such a wonderful wonderful wealth here uh, 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 of, of the revelation that Paul is talking about, the body of Christ, that, that we will go ahead and talk about it, and we'll look at it, if we have time, we'll get into the functionality of the body. 
If not, then we will deal with a lot of that on Thursday night, okay? But you know, when 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 you look at the when you look at the book of of Ephesians, uh, the book of Ephesians uh, is one of those books that uh, you can find a whole lot of who you are and what you are and uh, who you have become in Christ and all of this stuff. Uh, uh, many that 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 read it says that it it goes to the very heights of of, of the heavens as as it opens up and unveils the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ to you and to me. So what I want to do is I want to look over here. Uh, let's see. Let's let's start at verse nine, chapter two, and verse nine, and let's just kind of read through it, and then as we do, then we will uh, we'll talk about it. It says. Uh, uh, the scripture says, verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now listen to this. He said, For we are his workmanship. We are God's workmanship. I'm talking about the body of Christ. We are the God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. So this new life have a new way of living, a new way of existing. Uh, it's got a, an entire different works that that we are to uh, we are to live out. We are to manifest out of our lives, and not just the old uh, the works from the old man. Wherefore, remember that you being in times past Gentiles, meaning separated from God in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, right? The promises, the covenant of God was not, I'm sorry, the covenant of God, was, we did not have a right to the covenant of God. We were Gentiles. We were outside of the covenant. That's Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, and we are in verse 11. Verse 11. It says, Wherefore remember that you being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made with hands. That means, that simply means that remember that you and I were alienated from the covenant of God. We were, There were Jews and there were Gentiles. The circumcision were the Jews. He says according to the flesh. So these were the Jews that were brought into covenant with God through the lineage of Abraham, right? And then there were the Gentiles. That was all the other folks that were outside of the covenant of God. So I want you, I want you to see that God makes no distinction between black and white, yellow, blue, and green. He only makes a distinction between those who are his and those who are not. Okay? You you see, you see in the scriptures, you see Jew and Gentile. And now today you see those who are part of the body of Christ, meaning those who are born again and those who are not. That's, that's the only distinction when it comes to individuals God makes. All right. He places no, uh, 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 he makes no disparaging distinction or remarks against individuals who ethnicities are different from another. This is, this is who we're dealing with. Okay. He says, we were Gentiles, right? Verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ. You see that? Being aliens from what? From the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So who, who had the hope? The Jews, right? They had the Torah. They had the law, right? They had the covenant with God. They God started with them. God's intent was not to stay with just the Jews. Because remember, the scripture said there is none righteous, no, not one. And one of the one of the uh the fallacy that the one of the uh mistakes that the Jews made was to think that they were the only ones that was righteous. God didn't choose them because they were righteous. God chose them as a vehicle through which the Jesus Christ would come into the world. They would accept Christ and they would propagate this gospel and bring in the Gentiles also. God's, God's intent has always been to get all of us, to, to reach every one of us, to bring every, 
every, every part of humanity in fellowship back with them. Okay, the significance of, circ of, of um, um, circumcision, if you go, go with me. <clears throat> uh, let me show you. Go with me to uh, Genesis 15. Genesis 15. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, Okay, uh, let's see. Mm. Okay, let, let me just show you. Let me just show you here, okay? Uh, go to, um, let's see, uh, go to Genesis 17. Genesis 17. Uh, let me show it. Let me show you the significance of it. All right, uh, Genesis 17 verse one says, "And and when Abram was 99 years old and nine, the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect." And notice what he says in verse two: "And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply you exceedingly." And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall bear, and you shall be a father of many nations. And neither shall your name any more be called Abraham, but your name shall be called Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Okay? All right, are you with me? Then look at verse six. It says, "And I will make of you exceeding. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant, uh, to be a god unto you, and 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 to thy seed after thee." And I will give unto you and unto thy seed after thee the land wherein you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting position. And I will be their God. And, and God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore, thou and your seed after thee in their generation. Now here it goes, verse 10. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. That's the removal of the foreskin. All right? That they shall be circumcised. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall, listen now, it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. You see? And verse 12 says, And he that is eight, eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generation. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of your seed. So notice that the, the, the circumcision of the, of the male skin uh, was a significance of, of a covenant that God had between Abraham or the Jewish nation and God. That's what that signified. It signified the covenant that they held between God and man or uh, the Jewish nation. Okay? Uh, chapter, chapter 13 shows you that uh, this covenant that God cut with Abraham, it wasn't really with Abraham. Uh, because the Bible said in 13 that Abraham fell into, fell, felt a great horror and fell down and he was he was asleep he was gone and, and a, a burning flax came and walked between those pieces and that is significance of the Lord Jesus Christ so the covenant was really cut between God and God okay but man became the beneficiary the Jews were the beneficiaries of this covenant. And so this covenant was, was a symbol, or the circumcision was a symbol of the covenant that God kept between man and 
I'm sorry, between the Jewish nation and God. And, and why circumcision? Because it drew blood. Okay? And now the New Testament say we don't have the natural circumcision. The circumcision that you and I have now is a circumcision of the heart. And we know that is true because John 3 and verse 16 uh, tells you and I, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so when you and I are born again, that's exactly what happened to us. The, 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 the removal of the foreskin or the new nature, the removal of the old and the new nature that comes about. And you can see also in Genesis 22, it says, and, and he left off talking with him and God went up from Abraham and Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that was born in his house and all that were bought with his money, every male among men, among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day as God had said unto them. And Abraham was ninety years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. So you see, that was a symbol of the covenant that man had with God. All right? Okay, let's continue then. I love that question. Let's continue. In Ephesians 2 and verse 12, he says, <clears throat> That at that time you were without Christ, you were alienated from the covenant of wealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise, and had no hope and without God in the world. You had, and that's why you see in the Old Testament when they say you were Gentile. You were, you were not part of the covenant. You had no right to the covenant, right? It says here, but now, verse 13, in Christ Jesus, you who were, you who sometimes were afar off, you have been brought nigh, you have been brought close by the blood of Jesus Christ. Notice it said, question is, don't the Jews still believe they, they are supposed to be the only chosen? Uh, you know, uh, Many of them uh, believe they're the chosen nation. A lot of them, especially the Orthodox Jews, they don't hold to the uh, teachings of Jesus. They hold to the Old Testament, and they believe that the Messiah one day is going to come. But there are many Jews, this, if not thousands, millions of Jews, that have been turning to Christ and, and, and turning to Him, right? Uh, in, in, in one sense... Naturally speaking, remember, God says to them, this is a covenant, an everlasting covenant. So in one sense, naturally, that little nation over there called the Jews or Israel, God has chosen them. And he's chosen them for his particular purpose. So even though uh, Romans 11 says that they, 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 um, they were cast off because they denied. The, 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 the one that they should have known, right? The one that came to them, Jesus, they cast them off. And so they were put off for a season. But God is going to still deal with this nation. And according to the book of Revelation, uh, especially during the, uh, um, the great tribulation uh, called Jacob's trouble, God is going to deal with that nation particularly. And reach that nation, okay? But but in this dispensation of grace, God is he, uh, reaching both Jew and Gentile. And one of the things that he says to us, as you're going to see in the scriptures, is that, uh, you know, when we come into Christ, there's no longer a need for Jew or Gentile. Because what God does is he takes them both and he makes one new man in Christ. Are you following me? So if God does that, why do, why do people have this uh, a notion that, that God uh, either looks or uh, thinks that uh, people of color are of, of lesser significance or they are lower or they are less value? than those who are not. I mean, that's foolishness, right? That's, that's foolishness. That doesn't come from the scriptures. Oh, yeah, that doesn't come from the word of God. 
This, this doesn't come from the word of God. That comes from the pit of hell. That comes from Satan himself. And people that have believed that and have passed that mess down from generation to generation. That doesn't come from the word of God. It doesn't come. Notice, I'm going to read it to you. You could see it for yourself. Listen to it. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes uh, were afar off, you have been brought nigh. You see that? You see that? Well, who were Gentiles? Gentiles was everyone that was in Jews. That's white folks, black folks, yellow folks, Indian folks. I don't care. Find them anywhere you can find them. That's all of us. Gentiles. And the Bible says all of us have been brought nigh. We have been brought into, we have been brought close into fellowship with God because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are y'all following me? So there is no such thing here. There is no such thing. Uh, some of these things that people have said. Now God, um, Noah cursed the individual, the individual he cursed was black and, and all of this. So I don't have time to go back in there. We'll take some time to do that. But all that stuff is rubbish, man. That doesn't come out of the word of God. Listen to this. Verse 14. For he is our peace. Our who? That's Jew and Gentile. He is our peace who hath made both one. You see that? Do you see that? He hath made both of them one. Well, how are we made one? Because he brings us into the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Jew and Gentile. The Jews have to accept them too. The gospel is for everyone and it is to everyone. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition. In other words, the Bible said that, that God... Through, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. He has removed the, the, the wall, the sin that separated us from him. God has removed it. See what it says? Look at verse 15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for the making himself of twain, one new man. And so he made peace. The law of commandment that was against us, that told us what God required, but we broke every law. If you break one, you are guilty of all. The law did not, God did not give us the law in order to show us how righteous we were. He gave us the law to show us how wicked, how sinful we are, and how in need of him we are. Are you following me? Because one of the stumbling blocks with some of the religious leaders of the Jews is that they believed they were so righteous, and they had no need of God. Are you following me? And so God put it there, and so, and so that law of commandment was the stuff that, 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 um, that law of commandment was ever present before, b before us and between us and God that said we were guilty and we deserved punishment because we have broken the laws of God. And so what Jesus did by his blood is he satisfied. He satisfied the demands of a holy God. He paid the price as a man. For every law, everything that we have broken before God, he paid the price for it. And in doing that, every one of us who accept Jesus Christ as Savior, then God, then through his blood, he brings us and reunites us back to God. In essence, then he removes the stuff that kept me and God from talking to each other. He removed, he removed, the Bible said, he calls it uh, the middle wall of petition that restricted me, that kept me. That thing that kept me from, from, from uh, coming close to God and, and, and being in fellowship with God. He removed it. That was the sin. 
And notice now man and woman, black, white, yellow, blue, purple, you see, Muslims, all the, any and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord is accepted in the family of God. And God takes us all and he makes one new, what's that new man? That one new man is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the new man. So you see, in the kingdom, God had God doesn't have issues with women in the kingdom. God doesn't have issues that women is less than a man in the kingdom. There is no such thing in the kingdom. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. Glory to Jesus. There is no gender in the spirit, right? Right? There's no gender in the spirit. So our bodies, our bodies represent one of or part of the functionality of what we are to do in the earth. It is part of our uh, uh, destiny, if, if you want to call it that, okay? Uh, our physical bodies. It is not only our address, but it also uh, uh, bears witness to what what is part of our purpose. For instance, when God put a woman, when God built a woman and, and built the body that he, that he built her with, then one of the things that she were going to be is the one that will carry seed. He created men to give seed. He created women to carry seed. Now that's not all that she's meant to do. But you see, don't, 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 don't utilize just because uh, 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 of our physicality, you want to say that women are less than a man. That is preposterous, man. You see what I'm saying? Uh, 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 another thing that you have to understand is the way God created us, the male represents Christ and the, and the woman represents the church. Uh, all of these things are significance. They have significance to them. They, they, they are not supposed to cause you and I to look at one another and feel like we are above one another or we have dominion over one or the other because of how we were created or the color of our skin. Does that make sense? God created everything with, his, with, his, with, with a, a divine purpose. The woman doesn't think less because she's a woman. She thinks different than a man. But she's not, she's not less of a human being. She's supposed to rule with her husband. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. But you know, we, we, we let all this stuff, man. We, we have allowed all this stuff. And the church has bought into all this mess. And I call it mess because that's what it is. It's not part of the word of God. It's not part of the word. It's not the word. Are you hearing me? The way you and I combat these things in our world and the way we fight these things in our world is we are to show them. We are supposed to show them what the body of Christ really is like. What, what Jesus is really like. We are supposed to show them. And we're supposed to show them because we're supposed to be one. We are supposed to function as one. The world would look at us with, with all the different ethnicities, all the different nationalities, people who think different. Huh? Sometimes may, 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 may look at things differently. Uh, do things a whole lot different, but yet they are able to function in harmony together. What causes that? The world is hungry for it. The world can't find. Look at look at us today. Look at our government today. It's it's turned upside down. Look at the world. Look how the world is functioning. They they are looking for unity. They are wanting peace. They are wanting a cooperation and all of these things. The church. Is supposed to show that. Am I right? Am I right? The church is supposed to show that. Look at verse 15. He's, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, 
uh, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for the making himself of twain one new man. Let me keep reading. And, and that he might reconcile unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the en enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you, which were afar, and to them that were nigh. That means Jew and Gentile. For through him, we both, you see that said that? Do you see what it said there? It says, through him, through him who? Through Jesus, both Jew and Gentile have access by one spirit to the Father. You see that? Do you see that? Oh, l listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Y you got to start loving who you are. There's no reason for you not to like your skin color. You're not going to have another one. That's the one God gave you. Thank God for it. Love who you are. Be who you are with confidence. You see what I'm saying? If other folks don't like you because of your complexion, that's their problem. Like yourself. Because God loves you. You see, it says, now therefore you are no more, listen, listen. You are no more strangers and foreigners. Man, I wish you, would. look, we can, we can have a Holy Ghost time just on that scripture. You are no more strangers and, follow, and, 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 and uh, foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Watch this out, watch, watch what he said now. He said, he calls us an household, right? He said, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. That means this household is built upon the doctrine of the apostles and prophets. Listen to this. Jesus Christ himself, he is the plumb line. He is the chief cornerstone. He is, he is the stone that holds everything together. Okay? He is the chief cornerstone. In whom all the building, watch this now, all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple. And though, you see, that's why we're the body of Christ. Jesus is the cornerstone, <clears throat> He's the plumb line, He's the, he's, the, he's the foundation that you build everything off of. <coughs> And so, and so look at this, look at the, the mystery of this thing, is that, is that he, he is taken in bodily form to heaven, but the spiritual form of Christ is left on the earth. And so when God, when God saves us, he puts us, as it were, picture a silhouette of a human being. And what God does, he puts us into, into every crevice, every part. Every place that we are supposed to be in the body. Now, understand this. When God fits you in the body, listen to me. When God fits you in the body, let's just hypothetically say you are a believer and you have a gift of organization. Let's just say that. Okay? You have a gift of organization that God has given you. And uh, um, let's, let's just say... And you also, God has also given you a, a gift of the spirit of healing to help people and to heal them and to pray for them and so on and so forth, right? And, and you, you like to encourage individuals. Listen to me. If you go to China and live, that's your place in the body. If you go to Japan and live, that's where you fit in the body. Wherever you go in this world. That, that gifting and the place that God put you, let's just put, hypothetically say, he put you to be part of the kidney and to, and to help get crud out of the body, All right? That's going to work with you wherever you go. You, you can't join the body and all of a sudden say, well, I want to be a prophet because it seems lucrative. You may want to be that. But but what you have to do is find out, who does God say I am? 
what, what are the giftings that God has given me? Because what he does is he puts you in the body where you fit, where you are designed to function and to function at, at the very max. That's the place that you fit. In other words, you and I don't come into the world trying to fit somewhere. We come into the world because we already fit somewhere. You understand? There's already a destiny for us. God has already designed what part of the body you and I will fit in. Are you, are you listening to me? You know what that does? So there's no need to be jealous. There's no need to be envious in the body. There's no need to fight one another and to jock for positions. There's no need to do that. We, we do that because we listen to our flesh, you see? And we, we are motivated by pride and selfish ambitions and greed and things like that. But when we come into the family of God and we, we settle down and begin to be taught and we, we start understanding and learning the things of God and allowing the Lord Jesus to control our lives, giving no place to the adversary and to the flesh, then what you and I begin to understand is that you fit somewhere in the body. God has a, a certain particular place for you. Does that make sense? I've been in churches where, where man, we're jockeying for positions. Constant look, looking to get, get a promotion here and get a promotion there. And one day the Lord began to show me you don't have to jock for positions in the body. You already got a place. Find your place. And when you find your place, then be the best you can be there. Because in that place, God has given you every gift, every talent, and every ability to function in the place that God placed you in. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. And so listen to this. It says, in whom all the building fitly framed and joined together grows out, grows uh, into a holy temple. So if God puts us in that, then you and I are supposed to grow. Uh, we, we are supposed to mirror the Lord Jesus because remember, he's the foundation. He's in the house. He is the house, okay? He's in there. And you and I are placed in his body, okay? And we are, what's it? The Bible said we are fitly framed. Uh, he don't just throw us in there. He knows exactly where we fit. So, so, so there is nobody in the body that don't have nothing. I don't have no gift. I don't have this. I don't. Yeah, you do. You just got to find it. Jordan say, according to God's will is where we have been designed to be to serve the body. Exactly. According to the will of God. God purposed us. Before the foundations of the world. He knows where we will fit. And watch this. Based upon where you fit. The gifts and the abilities that has been granted to you. Has been granted to you. For you to function in that place. Are you following me? So so, so if, I'm a, if I'm part of the foot. I can, I, can, I can want to be part of the head all I want to. God is not going to put me part of the head. And if I jump into the head. I'm, 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 I'm trying to function somewhere where I have not been graced. I have not been given the grace to function. I need to function in the foot. When I function in the foot, the, the place is sketched out. It, it, is, it is designed especially for me. Am I making sense? And the Bible says, and verse 22, it says, And in whom you also are built together, listen to this, for habitation of God through the Spirit. Do you see that? Do you see that the body of Christ, that God is, 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 is fashioning this body? And listen to me, as he fashions this body, this body becomes the house of the living God. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in the body. He not only lives in us individually, he lives within us corporately. God, uh, am, I, am I making sense to you? I, am I making sense to you? Jesus said in John 3 that he had the spirit without measure. 
So listen to me. You and I, though the fullness of the Holy Spirit lives within us, the Holy Spirit functions in us to the degree of the grace that has been given to us. But when the body comes together, whoo, Jesus, are you hearing me? When the body comes together uh, 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 corporately, whether you, when I'm talking about the body as far as the local church and whether we're talking about, about the body as far as the body uh, corporately around the world, good God Almighty. Folks, there is tremendous power that's made available. Are you hearing me? All sorts of things are available to us when we function as a body because the Bible says here that God dwells in us. God's house is the church, not the building, the ecclesia, the people. And what you find out, is that the same way God resided in, in, in the man Jesus while he walked the earth, God resides in the Christ, the corporate body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that tells me that, that, that if the world is going to know about him, if the world is going to know what he is like, then they have to see the church. That's what the church is supposed to do. Jesus is not walking down Main Street. Jesus is not walking down Main Street. If God, if the world is going to see the church and see what the church is like, they are supposed to look at you and me. We are supposed to say, like John 14 said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Is that right? Come on, talk to him. Is that right? God lived in Christ. And through Christ, let me show you. Let me show you. Don't lose your place. Let me show you what I'm saying. Look at John 14 with me. Quick, quick. John 14. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Yeah, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, John 14, John 14, uh, John 14, verse 6. Look at this. He said, He said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth. Well, let, let me see, let me see. Before I do that, let me see if I can, let me see if I need to give you this first. Let me see here. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Watch this now. If you had known me, look at what he said now, you should have known the Father. And from now on, you know him and you see him. Look, <laughs> look at Jesus, man. Philip is like you and me. Philip is perplexed now. He, he is... He is uh, he is kind of mesmerized. He said, Lord, I, I need you to explain to me. What are you talking about? J just show me the Father and it will be sufficient. Because Philip is thinking about, he's thinking naturally. Right? Listen to Jesus. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me <laughs> has seen the Father. And how do you say, show us the Father? He said, Philip, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Listen to Jesus. The words that I speak unto you, I don't speak them of myself, but my Father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord, to come up. Look at this. He said, believe me that I am in my Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sakes. Verse 12. 
He, verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works shall he do, because I go to the Father. Now, do you see what Jesus is saying here? In other words, Jesus is saying this. Watch this. What? You got to pay attention. Don't miss this. Jesus comes into the world. He comes as a man. He's 100% man. He divested himself of his deity. He laid it aside to function as a man in order to save man. So now he comes, 1 Corinthians 15, as the last Adam. Right? He functions the way Adam should have functioned. Now watch me now. God is wanting to save this world. And so God, watch this now, God finds a willing vessel in the Lord Jesus Christ. And a vessel that has been prepared for him where God could fill him with, with his fullness. That's John chapter 3 says that. Let me, let me, let me give you the exact verse here. <clears throat> John 3, verse 34, he says, For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. In other words, the, the, the Spirit, God himself, filled the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to pay close attention. Because as a man, Jesus had to do something. You said, brother, what he had to do? Jesus had to put aside his own desire, his own will. He laid all of that aside and allowed the Father to embody him in his fullness. Are you seeing this? The Father embodied Christ as his fullness. So therefore now the Father was unrestricted. He had a vessel now that he could function through to the, to the fullness and do what he wanted to do. Are you following me? I'm talking about Jesus as a man. Because that's the same thing you and I are called upon to do. And so Jesus then could accurately say, if you see me, you see the Father. Because what I am doing, I am not doing it of myself. My Father is the one that's telling me what to do. And when I do it, it is not I who is doing it, but the Father that's doing it in me. So let me ask you a question. If Jesus functioned that way, how do you think the body is to function? The body is to function the same way, wasn't it? Jesus didn't have to try and get political power. He had the greatest power in the universe. Jesus didn't have to try to get economic power and all of these things. I'm not saying they're bad to have, but, but his pursuit was not that. His pursuit was God. God in him was the power of the kingdom. Jesus functioned. Jesus functioned in the context of the kingdom. That means everything Jesus needed came from out of the kingdom. Every, everything Jesus had to have came from out of the kingdom. When he needed money, bang, the kingdom of God functioned, and what happened? A, a fish gave him money. Are you following me? Uh, all I'm saying to you is that you and I as the church, we are not put here as paupers. We're not placed here as beggars. Uh, we're not put here to say, oh, well, I can't change anything. No. Uh, 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 God needs people in government. He needs people in every aspect, every area, every part of life. But you've got to understand that when you and I function, we not only function naturally by doing the law, but there is a spiritual a dynamo that you and I function with that puts demons at bay. This is how Jesus functioned. So let's flip back over. Let's flip back over to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. So you could see here, <clears throat> it says, In whom also you and I are built together for what? A habitation of God. A habitation of God. And you see, if we are an habitation of God, then we're to function like God. We're to move like God. We're to talk like God. We're to move like God. Are you listening to me? 
Well, listen to me. God then, listen, God is supposed to have a body like the Lord Jesus Christ. He now has a spiritual body that you and I make up together. And God is supposed to function through us unimpeded, unhindered, unrestricted, carrying out his will. That's why when you and I are born again, you, you hear teachings that you've got to die to yourself. You hear teachings that, 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 that we don't live to please ourselves. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We don't, need, we don't live to fulfill our will. Our will is carnal. You see, our will is not going to get us what we want, what we need. The will of God is designed based upon who you are, who God knows you are, who God created you to be, and where God knows you are supposed to be. God knows what you are supposed to accomplish and what you're supposed to achieve. He knows every turn you need to make, every stop you need to make, every U-turn you need to make. God knows all of that about your life. Are you listening to me? So when you and I surrender our wills to God, that's not putting us at a disadvantage. It's putting us at an advantage because now God can function through you the way he designed you to be from before the foundations of the world. And what that's going to do, that's going to fill your life. It's going to fill your life. It's going to fulfill your life. We call it destiny. It's going to fulfill your life. Your life is going to be full, filled with joy. You're going to know that you're fulfilling God's purpose and plan for life. You are functioning where God designed you to function. It's a whole lot of folks that don't know these things and don't understand these things. And they live life flustered and frustrated in the kingdom. Jocking for position. Trying to get ahead of this person and that person. When none of that is necessary in the kingdom. You can't ever take my place. You may be more eloquent than me. You may speak better than me. You may have greater degrees than me. And I applaud you for all of that. But you can't be me. You cannot be me. You can't have the same anointing I have. You cannot see things the way I see. You cannot, uh, 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 you cannot have the perspective that I have. You cannot. There is just one of me. I am unique. Are you listening to me? I am unique in the body. There's not another like me. There's not another like you. Are you following me? And God functions through us meticulously. He functions through us uh, uh, the way he designed you to function. That's why we've got to learn these things. That's why it's, 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 it's necessary. It's necessary for you and I to let go of ourselves, to make the transition from being self-reliant to God-reliant. Are you listening to me? That's not putting you at a disadvantage, my friend. People that believe that don't understand the word of God. People that believe that don't understand the things of God. Jesus said in John 7, 17 and 3, this is what life eternal is, that you might know God. If I can know God, then I will know myself. Because if I know God, God will reveal to me who I am. He will show me what I'm supposed to do. He will lead me in what, my, what, my, what his objective for my life is. And I will get out of the way and allow God to live his life through me. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? And this is what I found out. <clears throat> What I learned with God is that I, I don't have to live Christian. I don't have to live right. I don't have to live a Christian. Don't turn me off. When I, when I say I don't have to live right, it don't mean we don't need to live right. But listen to me. All of that doesn't come from the power and the strength of myself. I begin to understand that all I need to do is yield to God and he'll live right through me. Yield to God and he'll speak right through me. Yield to God and he'll think right through me. Are you listening to me? Are you hearing me? Uh, we don't achieve that by the power and the strength of our own flesh. 
actually we end up failing. We achieve that by letting God live through us. People say you get born again, now you got to live right. No, you get born again, now you got to learn to let God live through you. Mm -mm -mm. Is that good or what? I said, is that good or what? That's what Jesus said. It's not I that's doing this. It's the Father that's doing this through me. That implies that, that Jesus took the back seat and he allowed the Father to, 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 uh, to live his life through him unhindered. And so Jesus said, he that see me sees the Father. That's what the church is supposed to be doing. That's what the body is supposed to be doing, exactly what Jesus said. Now look, we're going to get ready to close, but let's, let's look at a few more scriptures. Look at chapter 3. Chapter 3. Uh, look, I love those questions, comments that you have coming. Keep them coming. If you have others, put them up there. It says, Paul says, for this cause. So just forget chapter 3. And just go to chapter 3, but just forget that chapter. Just forget there's a chapter here. And just, just kind of let it flow from chapter 2. Because he's... He's staying with the same thought right here, right? For this cause, or for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Listen to this. He said, I'm a prisoner. I am an apostle of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, for this reason. To make this known to you. To bring the truth forward. See, he said, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, to you were it all for you. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. What is this mystery? Listen to this. As I wrote afore in few words, or as I wrote before in few words. What is that mystery? Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. You, you, hey, you got your seatbelt on? Do you have your seat built on? Uh, look here, man. We're we getting ready to... We're going to bypass the moon. We're going straight to the sun. Look at it. Which in other ages... Listen to me. He said, this mystery in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. They knew nothing of it. God kept it to himself. He kept it in his bosom. God did not reveal it to them. Listen to this. As it is now revealed unto his only apostles and prophets... By the Spirit. Look at this mystery. That the Gentiles. Should be fellow heirs. And of the same body. And partakers. Of his fellowship. Or partakers of his promise in Christ. By the gospel. Do you see this? <laughs> Paul said, Paul said, he said, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. I have been given the task of bringing to you a revelation that was kept secret, that was hidden in the bosom of God, that men of old did not know about. God kept it to himself, and he is now revealing it to us through the gospel. And, and that, 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 listen, that revelation is that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same promise or of the same body and partakers of the same promise in Christ by the gospel. In other words, God puts no difference between Jew and Gentile anymore. That now in Christ, both Jew and Gentile, man and female, uh, national, different nationalities, we are all brought into one body and we're made one. We are partakers of the body. We have the same promises. We have the same inheritance. Both Jew and Gentile. God doesn't withhold anything from you because you're black. God doesn't withhold anything from you because you're white. 
Neither does God give it to you because you're white or you're black. God gives it to you because you're red. <laughs> you're in the blood of Jesus. You're covered by the blood. You have a right to the covenant because you're covered by the blood. You have been brought into, into fellowship with God by the blood of his son. Do you see this? Do you see this? God says all of us that are so different are, now have a right to the same promise. You see that? So all this stuff uh, you hear today where a woman gets paid little less than a man doing the same job. That's not in the kingdom, man. That's in the world. That's not in the kingdom. Whites are, 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 are what, what, they're, what they're utilizing it now. You got white supremacy. That, that, that's not in the kingdom. You can't find white supremacy in the kingdom. You can't find it in the kingdom. It don't exist in the kingdom. In the world it exists, but not in the kingdom. You listen to me. And just because it exists in the world, you don't have to be part of it. If you are a Christian, you have no business being part of that. You have no business having that mentality. Because that mentality is not the mentality of the kingdom. You have no business hating people because of their nationality. You have no right to put people down because of what they are or what they aren't. Are you listening to me? If they are abortionists and they repent and turn their hearts to Christ, Jesus Christ forgives them just as much as he forgives you. There's no distinction with God. Are you listening to me? This is the gospel. You say, how can I say that Paul was a murderer? Moses was a murderer. Are you listening to me? And God forgave him. God washed him in the blood and made him an apostle to the Gentiles. Are you listening to me? And if God did that for them, God does it for us today. Are you hearing me? We are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we're supposed to be doing. This is our job in the earth. Are you hearing me? The job you have naturally is just your platform. It is simply your platform whereby God is able to use you through your giftings and the way he has designed and created you. That is the particular way that God has designed to function through you. God uses you and he functions through you based upon the destiny he has for you. He functions through you on that platform in order to reach the people around you. But nowhere in the Bible are you better than so-and-so because of your race. Or I should say not race, but your ethnicity. Are you hearing me? I said, are you listening to me? If the body of Christ understood that, we would have the schism and the divisions and the hell that we've got going on today. Are you listening to me? The church would not have lost so much of his reputation in the world. You see, because we say one thing and do another, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't have to be that way. It wouldn't have to be that because we stand with the Word of God and not some political party or some some affiliation of this or that. Or see, or Black Panthers or whatever you want to call it. That's not where God is. That's not where the Word is. That's not the kingdom. You may not like what I'm saying. That's fine. But it's in the book. It's in the word of God. That's what we're supposed to major on. This is what we're supposed to be living. This is what we're supposed to be doing. The world should be looking at us and seeing black and white, Jew and Gentile, Protestant and Catholic. They're supposed to see us loving one another, walking together and displaying before them. How is it that black and white get together and we think so different? How is it that that that, that Muslim and, and this other person get together? How, what is it? And you would Fine, it is the unity of the belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm referring to. That's what brings us united. That's what brings us one. That's what makes us one in the body. 
Can I, can I, can you give me a few more minutes and I'm done? He said, he said, listen to this. He said, verse seven, wherefore I was made, listen to this. This is what he said. I was made a minister according, watch this now, to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. See, in, in essence, Paul is saying, I have been given the grace, the anointing, the ability by the power of the Holy Spirit to bring this message to you Gentile. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. That's all you see in the New Testament, there's only two classes of people, Jews and Gentiles. Folks who believe in God and folks who don't. That's basically what the Bible talks about. Are you listening to me? If you're black, if you're Indian, I don't care what you are. If you're mulatto, I don't care what you are. God doesn't choose you based on your skin color because he made us all in his image. He made us because he loves us and he came for us because he loves us. Listen to this. Paul says, unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. Watch this now. The unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see. I wish to God we all will see today. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things, watch this now, by Jesus Christ. You, you, do you see that? God created all things. In, in, in essence, then, the creation was created on the premise of who Jesus is, of what Jesus would do in this world in order to bring us back to God. God created everything around that premise. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 10. His intent. Now I'm going to close here. His intent. God's intent. Is that now. Are you seeing this? <laughs> oh man. I can't hardly stand it. His intent. Is that now unto principalities. You ought to mark that down. Unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. <laughs> I, I could imagine angels stare over the balconies of heaven. And when they look over the balconies of heaven and look upon us, they, they wonder in amazement of the wretchedness of our souls and how by the miracle of God, God transforms us and puts us into the body. Angels are left aghast. They're, they are left perplexed. Are you listening to me? But not just angels when they see the grace of God, but demons who chided, demons who mocked and laughed, and said, because God judged them for rebelling against him, God has to judge us. There is no way for God to go around it. God has to put us all in hell. The very creation that he loved, the devils threw a party. They threw a party, had their cigars and their mad dog 2020. They drunk their liquor and they laughed and scorned at God. We got you. There is no way that you can come out of it. You are in a conundrum. You are caught in a vice. Because you are so holy, you had to judge us. And there is no way to go around You've got to judge man. You've got to destroy them. But God didn't pay the devil no mind because God, the Bible said, hid some things in him before the foundations of the world. He knew what he would do. And 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 and, and God carried his promise. I think it's down 42 generations and came to a little old woman, a little girl about 13, 14 in Bethlehem. Her name was Mary. And he got this little girl, the Holy Ghost came on her and put the seed 
put embedded in her the Holy Spirit of God embedded in her the Lord Jesus Christ and wrapped him the woman gave him gave Jesus the ability to wrap him in human flesh are you listening to me and God came to us uh, looking like a man clothed like a man he came to us about six feet six one are you listening to me Jesus Christ uh, and Jesus came he went to the cross he died for us all the while the devil thought he had us uh, but what came out of this uh, 1 Corinthians 2 says, if the princesses of this world knew, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, but they didn't know what they thought they knew. Are you listening to me? You give, you give the devil too much credit. The devil don't know everything. The devil isn't everywhere, and the devil is not all powerful. Only God stands in that place, and he stands all by himself. And you know something? The devil had a fit when Jesus got up from the grave and the Bible said when he ascended unto heaven oh my God the devil didn't know what was about to happen what was about to happen that the, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ the spiritual body of Christ stayed upon this earth and now the Bible says on the day of Pentecost <laughs> the Holy Ghost came to 120 folks and filled them with his very presence and power. God by the Holy Spirit took these men and placed them into that spiritual body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, the devil began to see what he began to see. He began to see the wisdom of God. That's right. God now displays his wisdom. Why he took this long, why he came this way, he could have put his big foot, big foot into, into the earth and slew the devil, destroyed him, destroyed man, and started all over again. But that was not God's plan, because God had a covenant from the very foundations of the world with Jesus Christ. God would not turn from this covenant, and God fulfilled this covenant in the earth. And when he did, he commissioned Paul, he commissioned Peter and others to go and tell them. What was Peter to tell them? T. Peter told the folks uh, in Acts chapter 10, he told them, he said, it's not right for you and I to mingle together as Jew and Gentile. He told uh, Cornelius houses, he said, but I have seen that God is not making no distinction between Jews and Gentile. The gospel is open to all of them. Paul went to Ephesus. He went to Corinthians. He went to Philippians, Philippi. He went to Colossians. He went everywhere preaching this God. What is this gospel? Romes were saved. Are you listening to me? Grecians were saved. Are you listening to me? Folks that were vile Gentiles. The gospel touched them and opened their hearts. And you know what happened? God brought them into the promises of God. Look at these Corinthians. They were, many of them were prostitutes. There were prostitutes in the, the temple. They worship idols. And you know what God did? God saved them. That's right. And brought them into the family. We read Corinthians, the book of Corinthians, and we see some of the hellish things that were happening to them. And Paul reminded them, this is not who you are. This is not what you're supposed to do. You were brought out of serving Gentiles and I'm sorry, serving idols. You have been made part of the family of God. Folks, that's what's supposed to happen today. That's what's happening to you and I today. We are not what other folks say we are. We are what the word of God says we are. And if the church needs to do anything, we need to go back to the word of God. Are you listening to me? If you're going to follow anybody, follow folks who through faith, uh, are you listening to me? Through faith and, 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 and patience, they are walking in the word of God and they are displaying what the word of God says. In these dark days, 
There are probably other more dark days that will be will come. But I want you to understand. No need to put your head down because this thing ain't over. The devil's gonna look at us as he's been looking. God is showing forth. Uh, God is bragging on us. God is demonstrating his wisdom by how he's able by the preaching of the gospel to transform your life and my life to change us uh, and to eradicate uh, these ways of thinking and, and believing and acting and behaving that is not in line with the word of God. People that are born again, God comes in and fills their lives. The love of God is shed abroad in their hearts. According to Romans chapter 5, we begin to love what we didn't love. Are you listening to me? We are able to love who we did love before. We begin to see the world different. We begin to look at people different. Not because we went to seminary. Not because we went to some college or, or an Ivory League college. But because Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God has come to reside in us. Uh, we will say like Zach you said. I don't, uh, anything I've taken from any man wrongfully. I give it back to them. There's a transformation that happens in in our lives and folks if that transformation has never occurred in you then you don't know the God that I'm talking about you just go to church you don't know the God because my Bible said in verse John 3 and 9 whatsoever is born of God cannot practice sin why because the seed of God abides on the inside of him I'm talking about the body of Jesus Christ if God needed a body in order to save the world, and he filled the body of Jesus, then God needs a body in order to what? To demonstrate his love, his compassion, all that he is to this wicked world. And how does he do it? He does it through the body of Jesus Christ on the earth. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense? That's how, that's how God does it. Don't let what you see fool you. Don't let what other people do turn you off from God. If what they're displaying doesn't line up with God, stick with God and, and stop with them. Are you listening to me? I'm here to tell you, folks, if I'm follow, if you're following with me, then follow me as I follow Christ. But if I divert, pray for me. But don't follow me. Don't follow me if I'm not following Christ. He is the one that we ought to follow. He is the plumb line. He is the, the, the one that has given us the, 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 the things that you and I are to mimic. The things that you and I are to follow. Jesus' life is what we ought to mimic. And if, if preachers' lives are not displaying that, then don't follow them. Are you listening to me? If churches are not displaying that, don't follow them. Are you listening to me? Follow the Lord Jesus. This is the word of God. This is what God intends for us. This is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I ain't done, but we'll stop right here. I'll continue on, on next week because we'll talk about the functionality of the body. And God goes into how the body is supposed to function. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? I said, are you guys with me? That's the church. What is it? What's wrong with us? Uh, uh, the church uh, 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 bathing into this mess, man. Standing up for stuff that God wouldn't stand for. Huh? Joining ourselves to stuff God uh, refutes in his word. Are you listening to me? I said, are you listening to me? <clears throat> That's not the church. That's not the body of Christ. The, the, the world has nothing. Listen to me. The world has no other way to know Christ and to, and, to, and, to, and to understand who he is except through his church. The Holy Spirit functions through his body. God functions. That's how he set it up. Doesn't mean he doesn't do anything else. <clears throat> but the primary way God functions is through his body. That's why the church is so vital. It's so important. That's why it's important for you to be part of a local fellowship. God has a plan. He has a way that all this is supposed to work and is supposed to function. And when we get away from that, 
we get ourselves into trouble. It's amazing today that, that much of the church has no credibility with the world. It's amazing. They're not supposed to like us. But they're not supposed to like us because we look like them. They're, not, they're supposed not to like us because we emanate. We emulate, I should say. And from us emanates the presence and the power of Christ. That's why they're not supposed to like us. What, 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 what we testify, uh, we shine the light on the darkness that they live in. But we're not supposed to be like them. Amen. I love you guys, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I pray for my audience today. We release the very power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask, Lord, that you would minister to our hearts. There are people who would <clears throat> hear this message that may just have given up as this one person told me I don't, I don't even know if I believe the Bible anymore if I believe in God Lord, Lord Lord, touch them open their eyes forgive us as the body Lord the way we have uh, lived and the things that we have chosen to do that's, that's not right That the, the way we have uh, utilized your name and and, and wrongfully said that you said when you did. Cause confusion to so many. So many that have in some respect turned away. Lord, forgive us. And forgive the people, Lord. Lord, help them. Encourage them. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen the hearts of those who are listening to me. That the Holy Spirit of God will fill us afresh and anew. Lord, those who have turned out of the way, turn them back in the way. Those who have uh, wandered off from preacher to the, the, from the pulpit to the pew, Lord, turn us back home. Re-energize us again. Bring us back to what's first and what, what's important. As you so commissioned the Apostle Paul and so many that have come after him, Lord, and as you have commissioned us. Convict us as the church, the body of Christ. Let us see our folly and the things that we have chosen to do that's, that's not your will nor your desire. Convict our hearts, dear God. And turn us back, Lord. Those who are sick under the sound of my voice, heal them. Those who need deliverance today, bring deliverance to them. I pray in the name of Jesus. Those who are suffering with the coronavirus, Lord, heal in the name of Jesus. Open up those lungs. We pray over this, this, this evil that has come upon this world. Not just the vaccines, Lord, but that this thing would be pushed into oblivion. And that the many families, Lord, who have lost loved ones, that you would comfort their hearts and their minds. Those who are uh, even now in, in hospitals, Lord, and on critical conditions, Lord, heal, restore health. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. May people realize and understand just how much you love them, how much you care, and that you're here to save them, to heal them, to minister to them, Lord. Thank you. May the body be active, more active today than it's ever been, in reaching out to those who need you, Lord. Father, I thank you. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. If you need salvation, would you pray with me? Just say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I come to you. I come as a sinner. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sin, to wash me in your blood. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I promise with your help, I will live for you the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for making me your child. In Jesus' name, I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm washed in the blood. I am saved. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, fill me with your spirit and give me power to serve you. Amen. Folks, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to know that you have just become part of this family that I was talking about. Would you do me a favor? Would you write us a letter and just let us know, I just accepted Jesus into my heart. Amen. We've got some things that we'd like to share with you. You can write us at Power of the Seed at RodolfoPeterkin.org. That's Power of the Seed at RodolfoPeterkin.org. Amen. You can write us there. Let us know. Uh, uh, those of you, as we're sharing on the body, I, I said it before, and I want to encourage you. If you have any comment, any question on this topic that we're talking about, the body of Christ, or maybe just something that's been perplexing you that you, you really would like us to address, would you sit down and write us an email? Would you do that? And just send your email to Power of the Sea at RodolfoPeterkin.org. Amen. Just send it there, my friend. Uh, and uh, we, we will entertain your question and make sure when we get on on Thursday night, we can deal with these questions, all right? I love you all so much. I want to thank you for your continued prayers and support. Please pray for us, amen. Pray for God's guidance upon us. Uh, we need a, a uh, headquarters, and we believe in God for property and just so many other things. And, and we thank you for helping us and, uh, and, and blessing us. Amen. We thank you so much. We love you, man. We love you. You are precious uh, to God and to the things of God. We love you. God needs you. He needs you in this day and time that we are living in. Amen. And we, we appreciate you. If, if, if any one of you uh, want to support our ministry, you can go to Rodolfo Peterkin. Dot org. That's RodolfoPeterkin.org. If you want to do that monthly, uh, a reoccurring monthly, you're able to do that. Uh, we appreciate any gift, whether large or small. We thank God for you. And we know that the God that we serve, He will return that to you a hundredfold. Amen. God bless you. I love you in the Lord. We'll see you on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Remember, the power of the seed is not in its size. It's in its contents. God bless you, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.